Welcome to the fundamental building blocks of drumming. This course is heavily inspired in the book Stick Control by George Lawrence Stone and is the perfect starting point if you're looking to develop your drum rolls with amazing technique. The concept is fairly simple. We're going to memorize and master every single sticking and combination we can perform of four notes and three notes. I know this might sound overwhelming, but once you put all the combinations together, it's just 24 of them, and that's including triplets and 16th notes. So if you take it slow and you organize everything step by step, it's actually not overwhelming at all, and the results are amazing. For a very long time, I only focused on the single stroke roll, the double stroke roll, and paradiddles, and that's great. Those are probably the most important rudiments you can learn. But I used to get very intimidated when I was learning songs, the more advanced songs, and I saw that the sticking was right, left, left, kick, kick, right, right, left, for example. And that was enough to throw me off. I didn't have the mental speed or the physical speed. I personally learned to play the drums in my adulthood. I have no musical background, so if I can, if I, if I learn how to do this, I'm sure anyone can do this. I am going to break down the method I followed that took me pretty much, that opened the doors for me to start learning more advanced rudiments. For example, if I take a paradiddle and I move my right hand to a different surface, I get a different melody. I can also get a different melody from this. So very quickly, you're gonna realize that you want to be able to flow easily like that. I'll put this back. So think of drumming like a language. You want to be as fluent with your drumming as you are with your language. When you speak, you think of an idea and automatically the words come out of your mouth. But before that happens, you have to learn the words, you have to practice them, you have to give them context, and then uh, effortlessness happens. It's the same process with drumming. If you hear and you don't have, you haven't practiced, you haven't taught your muscles how to move to reproduce that sound, it's gonna be a mess very, very quickly. So that's why we're gonna focus on these blocks or words or patterns, however you wanna call them. For this, I'm going to use Drummer Lab. You can go to drummerlab.com. All these patterns are written down and organized for you so that you can practice them at different tempos. Not only that, you can also log in your practice times and tempos so that you can always uh, keep data and a good track of exactly what you're doing. So you can practice this so many different ways. I'm sure you can find a million different ways to practice stick control. I'm going to go over two methods that I follow that I think are very simple. One of them focuses on just going through the exercises and getting the time and getting different tempos. The other one focuses more in taking one individual pattern at a time and going deep down the rabbit hole and see how much we can do with this. Once again, the goal here is not to become the best paradiddle master. The, the goal here is to be able to flow between these blocks so that you can say whatever you want to say without thinking about it. You want your mind and your hands to be completely in sync, completely synchronized. So to access this course, you can go to drummerlab.com. You can create an account for free. This course here is in the premium, premium account, but don't worry if you don't have the premium account, you can also go to the lab and you can type these yourself or you can follow this course. The idea is very simple. I'm sure you'll be able to follow. So once you go to drummerlab.com and you go to the courses tab, you're going to go to building blocks. You'll notice that there are different courses here. We're gonna to go to the very first one, building blocks, hands, meaning that we're not gonna use kicks. All you need is sticks and a practice pad. Once you've accessed the course, you'll notice that all 24 patterns are written here. It, you can filter them by 16th notes. 16th notes are the groups of four then triplets are all the groups of three. 
So you can either focus on one or the other, or what I suggest in this first method is to just play all of them consecutively. So if you're a beginner or you're not familiar with all of this and you've just kind of practiced singles, doubles and paradiddles, this is a great starting point before we go on, start going into deeper rabbit holes. So for example, this is a long term practice. This is if you want results here, you have to build consistency and you have to come back every day and do this or twice a day even. So if the rec recommendation in stick control is to play each pattern 20 times. I'm more a time person. I, I get a little bit uh, confused when I'm counting measures and counting beats and then I get distracted in my thoughts. So time works better for me. Anywhere between two and five minutes is great. If you want to go over that, that's completely fine. And the first pattern, it's all right. And as simple as this looks, don't uh, underestimate this pattern here. You still want to be able to play this for two minutes with a consistency almost perfect. Imagine that someone's asking you to record a song that only requires this, but you want to make sure that every single stroke is perfectly on time and exactly at the volume or velocity you, you intend it to be. And what I also recommend is to start at a slow tempo. Remember, the goal here is not to play fast. The goal is to accumulate as much repetition as you can, also at the wide range of tempos. You want to master this at slower tempos, faster tempos. You want to build endurance, but you also want to build very uh, accurate awareness of what note or it, you're playing exactly so that later on we can accent it or do all sorts of things that I'll talk about in the second method. Let's say today is day one. We'll practice this at 40 beats per minute. We'll play it for two minutes, or sorry, two minutes. Then we'll go to the next exercise. The next exercise is the same thing, but with the left hand. And you still wanna go at 40 beats per minute. So I'll just do a quick demonstration here. Two, E, and, a, uh, three, E, and, a. Uh. And even if this feels easy, what you want to focus on is the quality of your stroke. How does it feel in your hand? Be aware of every single muscle involved in your movements and also uh, locate your points of tension. Anywhere where you feel tension, you want to find a way to release that tension and relax your hand. That's what's most important when you're practicing these slow, slow tempos. Then we'll move on to block three. Block three is a single stroke roll. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. You'll play that for two minutes. Then you'll go to the next one is a single stroke roll leading with the left hand. And I think I see, I think you see how this works. The next one is just gonna be a double stroke roll. Then the next one's gonna be a double stroke roll leading with the left hand. Then block seven, we get to the inverted double stroke roll. So now we're starting to get into the, a, unknown territory for a lot of people, and that includes myself before I learned stick control. I never even thought about playing inverted doubles. They're super important. They're super important because now you're going to create awareness of the second note. Your second double or your second stroke of the double becomes the downbeat, and that's a completely different perspective from a regular double stroke roll. So, this pattern here is going to have a direct effect in your double stroke roll. Your double stroke roll is going to become better. And then of course you want to do the same thing with the left hand. Once we got through all the doubles, we get to the three against one combination, starting with right, 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 left, 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 right, right, left, left, left. This is another one that you definitely want to develop, especially if, you, if you're having trouble with your left hand. Once again, you want to play at 40 beats per minute. That's where you want to start with. And you want to make sure that you can play it in a way that if you closed your eyes and you just heard back to the, uh, your recording, you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference about, your, about which hand is playing. So if you listen back to this with your eyes closed, 
you shouldn't be able to tell like, oh, that's a right, left, 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 because we tend to play it like this. Especially if you're right hand. You wanna make sure that your strokes are as even as possible. Once you can control that, then you can start playing with dynamics. And that's not according to me, that's according to George Lawrence Stone, best-selling book written almost 100 years ago. So we'll just trust that knowledge. We want to do that. We don't want to question Mr. Stone, at least not in this regard. So keep, if we keep going here, block number 12 or pattern number 12, it's the opposite, left, right, right, right. Then we just have four more to go, right, right, left, right then left, left, right, left. These are what are going to become our inverted paradiddles uh, later on. And then right, left, right, right. You're probably familiar with this one, especially if you've combined it with the left, right, left, left. And that's it. Those are the 16 patterns, um, 16 patterns of groups of four. And if you practice each one of these for two minutes, that's already a 30 minute practice. So imagine if you play it for three minutes, that's like a, what, three times 16? That's a 48, 48 minute practice, right? Yeah, 48 minute practice. So if you have one hour to practice, you can do that. If you have 30 minutes, you can play it a little bit less. If you have two hours and you really want to focus on technique, then you can play it twice. The first time through, you run it at 40 beats per minute, then you do it again at 45 beats per minute, and then you do it again at 50 beats per minute. But it's very important that you get through the full two minutes at least. And then we have the triplets. The triplet combination, since we have less notes, we are only dealing with three notes here, we have less patterns. This time we have eight, eight blocks in total and that's it. If you memorize and master these eight patterns, imagine everything you can do by combining them. I've already practiced this here once, so you can already see that back in June 5, I practiced this for, for three minutes at 60 beats per minute. And it's just a right, 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 right. It's the same as the first one, but now your perception changes. Even though it's just right hands, now instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you're thinking one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And even though it sounds the same, it's, you're not interpreting it the same way. So you can manipulate it in different ways. So you once again want to go through this and you want to think in terms of triplets. Now 60 beats per minute, since we're playing eight note triplets, still pretty slow. You wanna make sure that your full stroke is clean, your ghost notes are clean, and all of that you can only take care of if you're practicing really slow. And then the second pattern is going to be left, 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 left. I'm not gonna stick to it that much. Right, left, left. This is another pattern that is very important. It took me way too long to get into this one. You really want to develop that left hand. And this bit of music here is going to be part of the six stroke roll, the paradiddle diddle the double paradiddle, so you want to work really hard on developing this one. Imagine if you're playing a drum set. Boom. So this is, this is perfect. If all you have is a single stroke roll in, and you're only playing, and you're playing a triplet drum fill, you're gonna be very limited with your orchestrations if you don't have any other stickings in your sleeve. So you want to work on this one. Same with the left, right, right. Then you have the right, right, left. Once again, this is part of your single, uh, of your six stroke roll, paradiddle, diddle, and so many other rudiments. Then you have the left, left, right. And this is one of my favorite ones to practice. I used to struggle a lot playing shuffles. My shuffle was, was terrible. And of course it's, always a work in progress, but learning to play this, once again, you're, you're focusing on the second note, so, or the second double, sorry. And if I take away my left hand from here, I have my shuffle. I used to play it like this, but now when you emphasize on that second stroke on your downbeat, 
gonna give you a, a, a shuffle beat with way more attitude, way more character, way more control. So this is another pattern that you definitely want to practice for hours and hours and hours and hours at all the different tempos, slow, fast, all of them. You want to explore them. And then you have the left, right, left, left, right. So the same with, with the left hand. Once again, you, you want to develop this. If you want to have a strong left hand, you have to be able to play this. So all these 24 patterns, you have to play them every day, especially if you haven't done this yet. You want to memorize them. These should be like your basic words that you learned uh, when you first learn how to speak. If with, without these, you, you'll be very limited expressing your ideas. So that was method number one. Now, method number two. And this took me a while. This took me a while. For a long time, I practiced stick control. I, if I remember correctly, for six months, I just did method one. I just came back every day. And what I felt was that my drum rolls were definitely getting better. But then when I was back playing and jamming with my friends, all these new patterns that I learned were not being applied. Every time I played a paradiddle, it sounded like I was forcing the paradiddle in there. It didn't sound like it was natural. All these ideas that I can do now, I can even speak and I'm not thinking about strokes anymore. That didn't happen. I had to think of specifically the pattern I wanted to do. Just like when you learn to, when you're learning the language, you have to think of the word and then you have to think of the other words that you need to make that sentence. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. And when you're playing music in real time, that just doesn't work. So I had to find what the next step was. And this was it. And this is all, all I needed. These two methods are the only ones I follow and they're extremely effective. They, they get me to everywhere I want to get. The second one is, let's say I'm gonna practice for one hour. Instead of practicing each pattern for, for two minutes, I'll pick one and I'll go deep down a rabbit hole with that one pattern. I'll get to know that pattern. I'll try to apply it on different surfaces. So if it's just right, 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 maybe I'll do groups of threes. And once again, I developed a drummer lab for this purpose alone. I used to write everything on a whiteboard. I still write things on a whiteboard. It's great, but having a drummer lab allowed me to really write down my ideas in a matter of seconds or minutes and then be able to practice the rest of the time instead of spending so much time writing it down. Your drummer lab might look different. I'm using a very early version. Uh, at this, at, at, as of today, drummer lab hasn't been released yet. So I'm still using a, a very early demo version, but the content is exactly the same. That's the same. So you can follow, follow through. And for example, something you can do with Drummer Lab is you go to the settings and you activate the toolbars. You can add beats, you can delete beats, you can do so many things here. And in this case, I'll give you an example. I'll add a Tom 1 and a Tom 3 and you could move the strokes by clicking. You can delete them. So for example, I can do this and this is all a right hand exercise and I don't know, I don't think I have to explain too much about why you want to be able to do this. This will give you, you want to focus, I don't have my full drum set here, but always focus on hitting the center of the drum, always be consistent, and this is what this one would sound like, for example, and this is a way. So you see where this is going. You, you start, let's say you play for three to five minutes, you play it only on the snare. Step two, you play a different orchestration. Step three, you play another different orchestration. And let's say you like one very much. It's like, oh, because once, once you've done this enough, you can really hear melodies. And let's say you find a melody you really like. Let's say I really like this melody. I can go ahead and save this one here and save it as cool melody, for example. And once that's saved, I can go back to the lab right here, which I'm not gonna click right now, but you can go back to the lab and you can load, you can load the beat you want. As you see, I have a lot of, a lot of videos, a lot of patterns that I've saved there. So this is one way of doing it. So you'll start just on the snare for five minutes, then you'll play different melodies. You can 
stick to one melody, you can play three different melodies. And the other thing you can do, for example, let's pick a different one. And this is how I will do it. I literally pick a random one. This is completely random, left, right, right, right. It always works. This always works regardless of the pattern. You will always find a very musical melody if you put enough time into it. So once again, I'll go through the steps here in, in, the, in the method. First, play everything at the same volume. That's definitely the first thing I want to do. Then I can either keep the same pattern and try different tempos, which for example, let's speed it up to 80 this time. And if I right click here, I can accent notes. So after I practice the first one, maybe I want to accent every left hand and all the right hands, I'm gonna keep them at a low volume. So there's one idea. I can, for example, now I can accent the second right hand and this right here becomes immediately a right hand exercise. And you'll see what I'm talking about. I definitely have to slow it down there. What I have here is this. And you want your accents to be really loud, your ghost notes to be really soft. I'm not gonna get into upstrokes, downstrokes, full strokes or the specific technique on how to play accents in this course. I'll leave that for a diff a, a, another course in dynamics. You can, you'll be able to find that in Drummer Lab. But for now, just try to really feel the difference between both notes. So for example, two, two, e and a, three, e and a, four, e and a. You want your ghost notes to be soft and your accents to be loud. And as I played it for 50 seconds, now you can see that my practice is logged in there. I can see what was my tempo and I can see for how long I played it. So now let's clear this note and I will accent the third left hand. And I'll leave the and of three and the and of four accented. So once again, I can spend easily 10, 15 minutes with this. And your goal is to be able to practice for an hour and a half, two hours without getting bored and without getting tired. If you can do that consistently, your results are gonna be better than you could ever think of. So that's, that's the best advice I can give you. Now this one you have one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. I want to memorize this pattern. I don't want to be struggling by, you know, when, when your hands or the pattern moves faster than your mind, you don't want that to happen. That's going to affect your technique. So you want to go really slow, even if that means hurting your ego a little bit and going down to 30 beats per minute, but you want to memorize the melody, not the pattern. The pattern, at this, at this point, you probably already memorized the pattern if you did method one. But you want this to be remembered as right? So three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. And I hope you see now where all of this leads to. So if you play that for about five minutes, now you'll, not only you'll memorize it, but you're gonna hear, you're gonna start hearing songs over that. And now you have a theme. Once you have a theme and you have a very rich vocabulary, you can develop an entire piece around it. And that's exactly where this leads to. It's a very long journey. That's why you have to enjoy it. If you're not enjoying practice, it's just going to be 
impossible pretty much. I, I didn't enjoy practice for a very long time. It was until my late 20s that I finally learned to enjoy practice and it was never lack of motivation. It was just that I never knew where to get started. My, I couldn't play drum rolls and I was very limited with what I could do and that led to frustration. So if you're stuck, if you feel like you've been practicing and results are not there, this is something that you want to practice. I guarantee you first day of practice, you're going to realize like, wow, this is a Pandora's box. Before you go to two block combinations, you have to go through this one here because you don't want to be learning blocks once you're starting to combining them. They have to be as fluent as the words you speak. So, but just to give you a little teaser and what that becomes, if we go back to these patterns here, for example, 15, right, left, right, right, and then you go to the next block, left, right, left, left. That's how a paradiddle is built. And for example, if we go to triplets, if you go, if you pick right, left, right, and then you pick a right, where is it? So if you pick block number seven, right, left, right, and I want to play a paradiddle diddle, I need to play now a right, left, left, which is right here. So if you combine block three, and block seven, starting with block seven, what you have is a right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Sorry about that. And if you add the accents, that's the paradiddle diddle. The, si the six stroke roll works the same way. Now the double paradiddle is a little bit different. You're gonna need four blocks for that one. So we're gonna talk about it in another occasion. But when I play this kind of pattern, I'm just combining a lot of these blocks. I'm not even thinking about the blocks anymore. I'm thinking of the melody. It took me a few years to get to this point, but completely worth it. Cause now I finally broke the chains away from just playing singles. I could play doubles, but I couldn't apply them on the drum set because I was usually playing drum beats and drum fills. I was boxed in that. So now I can think in terms of And it's just so much more fun to play drums now that I've gone through this. So I hope this guides you in the right direction. If you have any comments, please write them in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them as best as I can. And if you're interested in joining Drummer Lab, you can go to www.drummerlab.com and if you, cre you can create a free membership and you can access our free courses, which are amazing. There's videos for those too, so I won't talk too much about them. And you also have access to our lab where you can write and create your own patterns as you want. Here's an example of something I practiced, for example, a while back ago. This is some an idea I was working on. And all of this, if you're learning songs, if you want to a break down specific exercises. This is great, especially if you struggle reading music. Drummer Lab follows the exact same theory. So by learning Drummer Lab, you're also going to be able to learn a music theory. Uh, being that said, I hope you have a great practice session and I will see you in the next video.